Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where I teach you all about painting miniatures from start to finish and everything in between and sometimes multiple videos on the same topic. And this is once again teal, but uh, this is teal in a pristine clean fashion. As I did the previous video on how to do it older and dirtier, I got a question from a viewer asking me how to do the, uh, the same thing but a much more clean version with uh, some heavy shading. So today we'll be using the same four colors, Sotek Blue, Celia Green Shade, Temple Guard Blue, and Skin Blue. And uh, so we'll be using the same format, but I'll be doing a much cleaner version in the end, which you'll notice. So I start off once again by priming the model white, since we're using a lot of blues that you really want to be true with teal. You really want it to be a nice true teal, so always recommend uh, going over a white primer. And of course I did thin it down with a little bit of medium and I'm just going to do two thin coats of Sotec Blue over the miniature. This is the same technique that I did in the previous video uh, for this first step. But then as I said, the goal is to make it much cleaner, but the person did request that though it will look clean, they also wanted some heavy shading or at least uh, some a moderate amount of shading on the model and I'll show how to do that. It's not too hard at all while keeping the model pretty clean. This is how I typically do my armor. So you can apply this method to pretty much any color of armor, especially on Space Marines, but pretty much any armor in general, uh, you just switch up the colors. But uh, today we'll be focusing on teal slash turquoise. So this is the key is you want to get, uh, you want to match the color to the primer. Since we want true teal, we're going to do over a white. And you want to get a nice solid foundation on your model before proceeding to any other step. And that is why I'm gonna do two thin coats, that way you get a nice solid coat over the miniature. But uh, you don't have to worry um, about your brush strokes drawing because it's gonna be a thinner coat. And that way, no brush strokes, and uh, just, it's gonna look solid. Of course, just remember you get a nice coat over all of the miniature. And I'm just, once again, just doing a second coat quickly, covering up all the areas that didn't have a full uh, coverage the first time around. And that way you get a nice even coverage around the entire miniature. And of course the key is let it entirely dry before proceeding to the shading. That's a great thing about Miniature Painting 101, since there's going to be so many videos, we can stop at a point and cover the same method in various ways. That way, uh, there's extra learning experience. First one was how to do dirty armor and teal, and you can apply it to other types, but now it's going to be clean armor. So now we're going to do the Celia Green Shade, but the big difference, this is the first big step difference between this and the previous video, is that I'm going to water it down, and I'm going to apply a one-to-one -one mix of Celia Green Shade and water the miniature right so I thinned it down so it's half the, th the consistency it's a very dark shade and if you apply it to uh, straight out of the bottle you get the effect from the previous video really really deep heavy shading but when you water it down slightly I just used water remember the key is use soft water don't use hard water um, as you can see it really does rest in the crevices and along the edges but it doesn't really go anywhere else it really does pull up in these areas and it leaves the raised areas um, almost alone as you can see it, it doesn't really build up in these areas at all but that's nice and, and because it is thinned down it will be a lot less harsh um, of a tone when it dries and I'm just gonna apply it over the entire armor surface but you'll be able to see it's, it's much more of a truer teal in this case than the previous one in the shades uh, in the recesses it just isn't as dark And remember, when you start an area, completely finish the area before proceeding to the highlighting. And of course, let it dry entirely before. So now I'm going to go back to the Sotec Green, and it's going to be thinned down once again. And now the key is to keep cleaner armor. Is you The easiest way is just to do straight highlights with a brush and blend it with multiple layers. No dry brushing. Dry brushing produces a lot of texture. Um, I will dry brush a little bit at the end, but right now I'm just going to build up the Sotec Green once again in all the raised areas that are not along the edges. And so I'm going to take this thin down Sotec Green and just apply it to everywhere that's not uh, recess or along an edge. And I'm going to build back up that cleaner Sotec Green appearance on the armor. But it's not going to be too hard, as I mentioned, one thin coat and you're in great shape because the watered down um, shading did not really coat these areas that much. 
And it's also a great way to produce some shading between the legs and all the areas facing downwards because you just don't cover them as much with the Sotec Green. And since it is thinned down with some medium, it really does blend quite nicely with itself from the previous step. That's one of the benefits of going for a, a base color, a shade, and then back to that original base color, that the, um, the first layer of highlights don't look that extreme. And as you see here, I'm just building it up on the back of the legs, just getting that nice building up of Sotec Green once again. And it is, as you can see, much cleaner than it was the previous step, but there is some great shading to these areas because uh, it did pool up along the recesses and along the edges of the model. So the next color we're going to use is Temple Guard Blue. But unlike the previous uh, episode of Ninja Painting 101, what we're going to do is we're going to add the Sotec Green and the Temple Guard Blue together. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And then we are going to apply this, uh, once again, thin down with some medium to the areas facing upward on the model. So basically I'm examining where the light source is hitting this model and I'm going to build up some, some colors um, along those areas. And the key is once again to work a little bit further away from the edges and the recesses that we did the previous step. That way there's still a bit of the pure Sotec Green along the, these areas. But then we're just going to build up this one-to-one -one mix of Sotec Green and Temple Guard Blue uh, along the middle parts of these areas. As you can see I'm just focusing on the areas that are facing upwards. So the top of the backpack, top of the helmet, top of the legs, um, and so forth. As you can see, and it is, is thinned down. And once again, it will dry slightly darker than this. It appears a bit extreme, more extreme of a highlight than it will actually end up being. And it does, it does dry and it does blend quite nicely in with the, uh, the Sotec green in the end. I'm doing this as well for the hands. I'm covering the whole hand and I'm just doing a quick highlight along the edges of the fingers that are on the gun. It's really cool how a, just a quick change of tactics when painting a model can produce such a drastic different result. Excellent, so now we're going to do a quick edge highlight of the just areas that you really want to pop and that you want to draw the, the person's eyes to with Temple Guard Blue just by itself. So as you see I'm just quick, carefully dragging my brush along the edges of the backpack, the helmet, along the eyebrows of the helmet. Uh, the edges of the, of the hands, uh, the top of the knees, top of the feet. Just where I really want to just have a quick stand out and to just really bring up those details. So as you can see there's a lot of shading on this model, but it does look significantly cleaner and more pristine than the previous uh, tutorial. And that's what I'm saying, that's the key to uh, producing nice armor. Now typically you can stop it after this step and you're in great shape, but uh, I wanted to then just then apply a nice light dry brush of Skink Blue after this uh, just to finish off the effect. So I'm just going to carefully edge it out. Same with the backpack. Just bring up these details. As you can see it really does make these edges pop. And this is how I would actually prefer to do teal and armor in general. I felt that I had to kind of vindicate my, my painting style after the previous one where I went a little too, I went a little dirtier than I normally would. So I'm just doing a very, very light dry brush of skink blue, trying to pick up those edge highlights of the helmet and of the backpack. And that's it, just trying to carefully make those edges pop without going too extreme of a dry brush. So I have very, very little pigment on my brush. And uh, yeah, just going carefully over these areas. And that's it. So now you know how I paint up this model. And that's essentially the key to producing clean armor with some significant shading. As you can see, it has a great moderate level amount of shading on it. The, uh, the recesses and the edges are definitely popping. And uh, it looks great. And that's how I normally would paint up teal. 
and I'll just show a comparison of the two models, one from last week and one from this week. And as you can see, there's a significant difference between the two. So the one on the left is the one I painted this week. One on the one on the right is the one I did last week, a much more aged, worn out look. As you can see, kind of like a before and after photo. And uh, those are two ways of painting armor, one for pristine, one for older and aged, and uh, using the exact same color scheme. But as you can see, the, the steps is really how it, you differentiate, and the, end, the brush strokes alone is how you differentiate. So thank you very much, as always, for watching this episode of Miniature Painting 101. And stay tuned for next week's episode, part 77, which is just around the corner. But if you don't want to wait for next week, check out the warp. Click on the link for a free 14-day trial to my premium YouTube channel, where not only we get to see the next six months worth of Miniature Painting 101 episodes, you get to see over 60 start-to-finish painting tutorials, an Airbrush 101 series, battle reports, face-off episodes, just some awesome more gaming content. So go ahead and check out the warp. I think you'll love it. So thank you very much for watching. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone.